Hello and welcome to Young Female Entrepreneurs, the live stream that happens every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern here at ovaline.tv slash live. Uh, so Young Female Entrepreneurs is part of youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com, an online organization for entrepreneurial women in their 20s and 30s. My name is Jennifer Dono, and I'm the host for this evening, and I cannot tell you how excited I am for the guest lineup that we have. So the first one that I'm going to introduce you to is Catherine Minshew of The... Uh, Daily Muse, and she's someone I've wanted to connect with for some time. Her site's incredible. It's such an awesome resource for young women. And then the second one that we're going to be talking to is Julie Kelly, which I'm sorry, but Julie Kelly in of itself is a gorgeous name, gorgeous woman, and has some really incredible advice for professional young women that she's going to be sharing with us in the latter half of the show. So, but before we get going with Catherine, I wanted to go over a couple little housekeeping tips for young female entrepreneurs and things that we have going on in the near future. Um, the first one, of course, is the book club. This is a big deal. I have I have a bunch of images queued up, so um, I'm talking to the producer. Hopefully, he's on top of it. The first one, <laughs> the book club. The first topic is the book club, and uh, the book we're reading is Making Ideas Happen. And the moderators that we have for the book club, again, are Jessica Newell and Morgan Hatton. And they did our last book club with Melody Berenger's book, Craving Success. Melody Berenger is the founder of The Crave Company, and she talked about experiences she's had over the last 20 years in building 30 businesses. And so Jessica and Morgan did an absolutely amazing job moderating that book club. They were they came up with some fantastic questions. And if you go to youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com today or tomorrow or in the next couple of weeks, you'll be able to find out additional information about that. Totally free book club. Join it over Facebook. So we talk about stuff where you already are. So you might as well get in the conversation. This guy, I'd never really heard about this book before. And I'll have to tell the producer we have to add this to our, our thing of books, our little... Um, audible list um, but he's speaking at the New York Times small business conference and I don't I apologize I don't know the name of the conference off the top of my head but um, he's pretty fantastic the book is sounds like an incredible read thank you very much to Morgan specifically moderator Morgan this was her book recommendation she's a graphic designer and it's all about creativity and making sure your ideas actually come to life so you can find out, again, more at youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com. Another thing that we have is the YFELA ambassador, Well in LA's Erin Haslug. I don't know if I say her last name right, but I absolutely adore Erin. Um, she has an in real life meeting coming up in July. So if you're in the LA area, make sure that you hook up with Erin over there. Another thing, <laughs> I'm trying to get through this really fast because Catherine is in the green room, the virtual green room right now. And like I said, I love her. Um, so the the last point, um, which I totally got off str- off topic, but um, okay, couple points. YFE live streams. The next two ones that are coming up are really fun. Uh, we've got a headlines topic. So um, next week I'm looking for co-hosts. I need a couple young female entrepreneurs. If you go to ovalight.tv, um, if you're watching right now, and under the contact tab, there's a way to get involved in the show. And I'm looking for co-hosts. So we're talking about headlines. That's next Thursday. The following Thursday is Nancy T. Nugent. I don't know how to, oh gosh, I should have checked with her on her last name pronunciation, but she's the owner of Sweet Tea Salon. She was Miss Corporate America 2011, and she authored the book, The Networking Diary. She is so much fun to, to talk to on video. I've only gotten a, t- a chance to talk to her once previously before, but I know you guys will really enjoy her. And then after that is Erica Zidal. Of the, she's the CEO of SittingAround.com. Um, and she has a wealth of information to be able to tell all of you. Uh, so that's the next couple few weeks. Finally, Forbes is asking for the top 100 nominations for women's sites. And if you guys would, I'll include the link over at youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com. But if you have any time this evening or the next couple days to pop over there and just recommend youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com so you can get the word out about the show. So many amazing women are involved with this website that I want to make sure that we get the word out as as fast as we can. Um, because Erin, like I said, of Well in LA, Jessica Morgan, I mean, there are hundreds of other women that have been featured on the website and we want to get their names out. So... I know I've forgotten something, but before we get over to Catherine, I wanted to give a shout out 
to ovali.com. It's the company that has made me a young female entrepreneur. I partnered with my mother and actually my dad. It's a family business, women majority owned. So my mom and I are partners here. Ovali.com, we offer web hosting and cloud services. And I actually have a webinar coming up tomorrow. It's totally free. So if you're available at 11 p.m. Pacific to Eastern, love to have you over there We're talking about being the master of your domain, understanding your control panel, all that fun stuff that a lot of young women don't really get to um, look at on a daily basis. So let's go ahead and introduce Catherine. Catherine Minshew is the founder and CEO of the Daily Muse and Company Muse, a career platform and job discovery tool serving hundreds of thousands of professional women and men worldwide and recently featured in US Today, CNN, Forbes, and Inc. And if you've visited the Daily Muse at all, I mean, that is just a very short list of their mentions in the press. Uh, so without further ado, welcome, Catherine. Thank you so much for being on Young Female Entrepreneurs live stream. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I'm really, uh, I'm really thrilled to be here. I'm excited to be talking to you tonight. Fantastic. So let's go ahead and get into the meat of this discussion because what we're talking about, I don't know if I mentioned this, um, but what we're talking about is career sites, uh, resources for professional young women and where to figure out how they can build their career um, alongside their business really. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the motivation behind the Daily Muse and what it is, I guess, essentially. Yeah. Um, so the Daily Muse is a job search resource um, and a career resource for professionals, particularly for women. And it was really started out of my own personal experiences, um, feeling completely lost. So I was an international relations major in school. I really thought I wanted to work for the United Nations. And um, I finally got an internship my um, junior summer working for the UN in Switzerland. And it was nothing like what I had imagined. And it sent me into this, this place where I just had no idea what I wanted to do with you know, my life. And I felt like I was supposed to figure it out. And um, I spent time in management consulting at McKinsey. Um, you know, I worked at a few different places. And um, I just felt like there was a lot to learn about the business world and about succeeding in your career that wasn't available online. And um, you know, if nobody else was going to provide it, then I decided I would. So um, I teamed up with uh, two colleagues, my co-founders, Alex Kavalakis and Melissa McCreary. And we started The Daily News. Um, and we now have a team of, I think, around 200 contributing writers um, who help produce content and provide expertise, and then an entire job search section where we profile really, really interesting companies, and we talk about what does it mean to work at a tech startup or you know, at a, a large corporation, what does it mean to be a product manager versus a marketer versus an advertising. Um, we're really expanding that. It's kind of one of the big focuses right now, and I'm just kind of excited to see where it goes. And I could go on and on about the background behind Catherine because, I mean, not only is the Daily Muse fantastic, but Catherine is one of very few women who has been involved and in, in, accepted into Y Combinator. And I know I didn't ask you this, but could you tell us a little bit about it, your experience with that incubator? Yeah, um, it was really interesting. So you know, Y Combinator is this very prestigious tech incubator. Um, I wasn't going to apply because I genuinely didn't think we'd get in. In fact, with my previous company, which was called PYP, I applied to 11 incubators and was rejected for all of them. So when we started the Daily Muse, I thought, you know, there's no way this is going to happen. And at the very last minute, one of my advisors, um, who's Rachel Sklar, who runs an organization called Change the Ratio, she said, you know, why come you can't accept more women if more women are applying? So you need to apply even if you don't think you're going to get in. And we submitted our application about an hour before deadline. Um, and we were one of the teams invited to interview and then one of the few teams accepted. And I mean, it was such a fascinating experience. So first of all, there were 66 companies in our Y Combinator class. Um, 63 of them had male CEOs and three of them had female CEOs. Oh and, <laughs> yes, and, and, and at the founder level overall, there were I think something like 130 something guy founders and seven women. So, you know, you, it was a little interesting. I think we really had to prove ourselves. And when we first started, like, you know, one of the guys came up to us, like, he came up to me and he's like, oh, I'm doing this startup about weddings. Like, can I talk to you? And I wanted to be nice, but I was like, I've never been married. Just because I am a girl doesn't mean I know anything about weddings. Like, I will introduce you to other people who've been married. So, you know, at the beginning, we kind of had to deal with this idea that somehow we represented all women ever. Um, and, you know, as the program went on, though, I mean, we really, I think we really proved that, you know, we had just as much right to be there as everyone else. And it was really neat seeing, you know, by the time that our, our demo day came around, which is at the end of the three-month Y Combinator program, 
when they bring in hundreds of investors from all over the world and each startup gets two and a half minutes to demo. Um, it was really cool to see like our class was just totally behind us and, and it was a really great experience. But, um, you know, definitely like, especially at the beginning, we were kind of, you know, some of the only women in a really rowdy boys club. So. I think that's a fantastic message. I know that it's off topic a little bit, but what a great takeaway here in that, you know, if you don't apply, then you really, I mean, chances are, why not just take the risk and do it? So I think that's yeah. a fantastic message. So going back into the questions that I prepared and um, that are on topic, because like I yeah. said, I could probably go on and on with Catherine because I, <laughs> like I said, I followed her for some time now. So um, as far as uh, for the entrepreneurial women that are watching and they're mm-hmm. currently looking for or in full-time employment, how can they use the Daily Muse to advance their career and build their start up their business? Yeah. Well, I think there's a couple different ways depending on where a woman is in her career. Um, for people who are just considering whether they want to take the leap, whether they want to start a company, um, we have a lot of resources around um, how to know if you are ready to leave your job, um, how to know if a tech startup is for you, uh, if a small business is for you, how to think about getting funding and finding co-founders and making sure that those co-founders are, you know, are people that you, you want to work with for the next few years, that you share values with. Um, so there's a lot, of, a lot of content that we have in the early phases. And one thing I think is great about the Daily News a lot of people don't realize um, is the writers will often write back. So if you like an article, uh, leave a comment on it and ask the author a question or share your experience. And a lot of times, you know, you'll get the author will write back and share their expertise on your, you know, to answer your question. Um, so I think that's something really cool that you know a lot of people don't take advantage of. For but what I would also say is for people who know that they want to, you know, leave um, to leave their company or to start to start a company. Um, I actually think the company profiles that we do are a really interesting resource for thinking about how you want to build a company and what you want the culture and the fit and the look and feel of your company to be like. You know, it's been interesting for us as we get to go into all these other companies, you know, really big companies like Dell and Intel and small companies, um, you know, like Zero Cater, which is this 12 person startup in San Francisco, um, you know, or, or Lore, which is a really interesting company in New York that does online learning. As we get to go into these, like it's interesting, you start to learn what other startups work like and I find people tend to get really good ideas for themselves. They say, oh, that's such a neat tradition, or I love how that CEO, you know, has a meeting every Friday where everyone in the company can ask questions and nothing's off limits. Like, I think I'd like to do that too. I think it can help you, um, you think about values like transparency and leadership style that you might want to look for when you're finding partners and co-founders, when you're making your first early hires, um, all of those decisions that actually are going to have a huge impact down the line, I know as you grow, um, as you grow your own company. Now, going back into you were talking about going into these large companies, going into Dell. Is it actually you that goes in there? Or do you send staff? What does that look like? Yeah, it's been really interesting. So we have, um, and we're actually taking applications right now. Um, we work with a network of freelancers. So we have um, a couple of people right now in, um, in I think New York and Chicago and San Francisco are the first cities where um, they're often daily news readers, uh, have a, some sort of background in photography or videography or journalism, and they go through a quick training program with us, and then we actually send them into the companies to be um, kind of our eyes and ears inside the companies. And it's important to us that the companies themselves don't take the photos and produce all the materials because I don't think you'd get such an kind of honest, unfiltered perspective. Um, sometimes we do go. So I went to the Dell um, I went to Dell, I went to Kiva, I went to a couple of the early shoots because it's fascinating, you know, for us to understand, um, yeah, what these companies are like. But we're moving towards a model so we can bring on companies at scale all around the country where we work with other people who are, you know, kind of the eyes and ears of the Daily Muse. So I'm in the chat again. So we're speaking with Catherine Minchu of the Daily Muse. And she was just telling us about um, how you can use the site as a young female professional. And I'm in the chat, like I said. So if you have additional questions for her, make sure that you shoot them over quickly because I have only one other question for for Catherine before she heads off. And that is as far as um, 
big changes and new additions to the Daily Muse because I know the company piece that you were just talking about, gorgeous big photos that they have in there. And like she was saying, great resource for young female entrepreneurs as well. Um, that was something that was an addition that came later on, correct? Yeah, we're planning a lot. <laughs> okay, so let's let's hear some sneak peeks into the Daily Muse. Do you have anything coming up that we can look forward to? Uh, we do, we do. So you might have noticed if you go to uh, companymuse.com or companies.thedailymuse.com, which is the same page, um, up in the top left-hand corner it says all companies and then all jobs. So one of the things that we're looking at is rolling out uh, a job board on the Daily Muse where people will be able to apply directly through us uh, to the companies they're most interested in. And ideally, we'll also be able to track those applications. So rather than just throwing your resume into a dark hole, we will have some sort of sense of you know, whether the company's filled the position, how long they're taking to get back to you, uh, things like that to make the job search process more smooth. There's also, um, I'm trying to think how much to reveal. We're also <laughs> working on a, a couple of other things sort of behind the scenes. Um, one of them is, uh, is to help integrate the, um, the content and the job listings more organically. So if you're reading articles about um, you know, working in the fashion industry as content, then you might also see companies that we're working with, like a Banana Republic or something, you know, and, and be able to see inside the companies. Um, and, uh, and, and as you know, with that, we're, we're interested in using algorithms, um, basically recommendation engines. So you know if you go on Amazon and you say like, oh, I really like The Hunger Games and, you know, I, I don't know, I like some other book with a female heroine, then Amazon will say, well, you might also look, you might also like this book over here. Um, so we'd like to do that for companies. You know, if you like company A and you like company B, then you might also really like company C as well. And I think that'll be helpful in a couple of ways, one of which is just to help people discover really interesting workplaces that, that they might not have found on their own, but that actually would be a really good fit based on what it is that, that they're looking for. All right, so we have someone in the chat, ADC. <laughs> Question for Catherine, what's her best piece of advice for job seekers? Uh, I like that question. Um, I, think, I think informational interviews are something incredibly powerful that is often underutilized. Um, an informational interview is where uh, you reach out to people in the field that you're looking to go into or in the role that you're looking to have and, um, and ask them to you know, simply spend a few minutes with you over coffee or on the phone talking about their role and essentially giving you information about their industry. One of the reasons I think this is really powerful is it's a great way to get in front of people to show them that you're smart and you're serious and you're, you're very, very interested in what they do without asking them for a job. Um, you know, it's funny, but I can't tell you when, how much it makes a difference when you've met somebody on the phone or face-to-face -face in wanting to help them. And I think if you have informational interviews in the field that you're interested in, you can both learn a lot of inside information about what the company might be looking for or how you can tailor your resume and your application. And you can also then use those people um, as, you know, as connections. So um, I did this uh, when I was looking for a job in global health. I just met with as many people as I could because it's a very hard field to get into. And you know, if you apply through traditional, you know, the traditional job portals, a lot of times your resume just doesn't even get looked at. And I just, everyone I could talk to, I said, um, you know, I'm thinking about moving into global health. Uh, you know, would you mind talking to me about it? Even friends who I didn't think had any connection, if they'd ask me how I'm doing, sometimes I'd say like, oh, I'm good. You know, I'm looking at jobs in global health, hard to find, but it's been a fun process. And once I said that and somebody turned to me and said, oh, my, you know, my friend works at the Clinton Foundation. Do you want to talk to him? And I said, yes. And actually from that series of conversations, which started out as informational, I ended up finding out that they were starting a new team. They needed people with French language skills. I was instantly able to lead with the fact that I'm fluent in French and I, I got a job that otherwise I probably wouldn't have been able to, you know, to, to get. Wow, very cool. That's some great advice. So I know that we're supposed to be wrapping up. There's one quick question from Yelena. Hopefully I pronounced your name correctly. Um, what has been the most difficult part of starting your own website featuring content that has to be managed or updated often? That's a really good question. It's a great question. It's something that we've really, that we've really struggled with um, because you know, we joke that um, a content website is like a beast that you have to feed every day. Like Christmas, <laughs> it doesn't care. You know, New Year's Eve, President's Day holidays, like the beast has to be fed. Um, and so, you know, when you're just getting started, we found a couple things that was really helpful. One is we put a get involved section on the site so that anyone who was interested could write in very simply and express interest in writing an article for us. And that has grown the number of writers 
who are interested in writing for the Daily News really, really high. Um, so that's been really helpful in having, you know, having a steady stream of content. We also, um, you know, we were able, because we had more writers, we were able to start telling writers who were really unreliable or unpredictable that they had to you know, be a little bit better at kind of adhering to deadlines that they had agreed to or, you know, or we weren't going to be able to work with them. Because that's one of the hardest things is the day before an article is supposed to go up, suddenly it's not there. Um, so we always have articles that are, you know, we always have posts that are um, kind of backup so that, you know, at any point in time we can, we can put them live if we need to. But I would say just the, the continuity and the constant feeding of, um, of a website like that is one of the more challenging parts. I'm lucky enough in that one, one of my co-founders, Melissa McCreary, is our editor-in-chief. And so she runs all of the content. It's her, um, you know, her voice that, uh, you know, kind of almost trickles down to the site. And we have an amazing managing editor and a great editorial team. So uh, once you find other people who you buy into what you buy into and who believe in the, you know, in the community you're building, you can kind of all share that burden. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm, for me, it's, I'm just very, uh, very blessed to, I think, be working with such great people. Really? I mean, they must be great people because the site is fantastic. It's a great resource for young people today, young women especially. So tell us one more time where we can find the Daily Muse, maybe on the website, Twitter, and Facebook. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you can find us online at thedailymuse.com, T-H-E-D-A-I-L-Y-M-U-S-E.com. Um, you can find the company profiles at companies.thedailymuse.com or company news. And um, yeah, I'd love for people to follow us on Twitter. We're at Daily News, and I'm at Kmin, K-M-I-N. Um, and then Facebook is facebook.com slash The Daily News. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Catherine. And everyone that asked questions, really fantastic questions. I hope you'll stick around. Catherine, I hope to connect with you again very soon. Otherwise, everyone, make sure that you follow The Daily News. Fantastic advice. Great resource for young women. Great. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. And, uh, yeah, looking forward to um, – to stay in with the uh, with YFE. Yay! All right. Well, thank you, Catherine. So, everyone, we're going to take a quick, short uh, commercial break, and I'm going to go ahead and bring Julie Kelly on, who is of the, her career advice, and she's going to be able to give us three of her top secret success tips for building a professional career as a young woman. So, we'll be right back. I'm going to go ahead and turn on this quick commercial and uh, get Julie on. So, stay tuned. I get into my desk. <laughs> and one second. Oh, no sound. <laughs>
right, so I, again, if you're just tuning in now, you're watching the Young Female Entrepreneurs live stream, and we just got done speaking with Catherine Minchu of The Daily Muse, which, hello, oh my goodness, she's fantastic. And I am so excited because my next guest, Julie Kelly, is just as fabulous, and she is the CEO and founder of Her Career Advice. I actually have followed her on Facebook for some time, and funny story, one of her updates was something about um, interviewing a young woman who came in and had a funny handshake. It wasn't very firm, and she had blue nail polish on. So I had blue nail polish on (laughs) earlier, (laughs) and I made sure that I took it off before I interviewed Julie. Um, But it was, in my defense, it was ovalized color blue, and so I thought I was being cute by painting my nails blue. So anyway, trying to be a professional young woman, and I took off my blue nail polish for the interview with Julie. Um, But Julie, uh, we're going to go ahead and speak with her about a few things. You're going to want to stay tuned to make sure that you get her top three secret success advice, um, pieces of advice for young professional women, which we are, even as an entrepreneur, I'm sure a lot of you are actually um, working for somebody else full-time, building a a business on the side. I know there's a number of you that are doing that. But Julie Kelly, and let me give her a quick little introduction here. She's a CEO and founder of Her Career Advice, which educates and empowers teenagers and young women to strive for professional success in order to have personal success and happiness. So Julie Kelly, welcome so much. Welcome to the Young Be Entrepreneurs live stream. Thank you again for being on the show. Thank you for having me. And I would have liked to have seen the blue nail polish. I know. <laughs> it wasn't something that you had to take off. This was for an interview, so it was completely different. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because uh, I literally saw that the other day on the page. So if you're still watching um, over in the chat, make sure that if you have questions for Julie that you chat them in. I am on the chat, so I'll, so I'll make sure I relay them over to her. But Julie, why don't you tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you started Her Career Advice? Sure. So um, I basically felt like I had a calling and that I needed to step in and step up in my own life. I have been very blessed with um, a fabulous family and supportive parents who gave me a really great upbringing and I had great education. And I very quickly climbed the corporate ladder um, in my career. And by the time I was 26, I felt like I was close to the top of the corporate ladder both in position as well as in salary. And I've had a really successful career so far and it's clearly not even over yet. But um, I started to see a pattern forming in the last five years in particular where colleagues at work and in particular young females would come up to me and ask me, Julie, how did you know how to do that? How did you know how to say that? How did you know, how did you know, how did you know? And I thought, And it started to become like every day and I started to see this pattern and I thought these young women are clearly seeing skill sets or um, qualities or expertise in me that they want to emulate and I thought okay well I should I should do something about this and very casually I started sitting down with with women at work and we'd career coach and I'd map out plans for them or we'd work out a solution to a particular problem And when they would implement what we talked about, they went from being dumbfounded and not knowing even where to start to actually achieving exactly what we set out for them to achieve. And there was one particular lady that I worked with who um, actually had to negotiate something pretty significant with with our boss. And um, she had no clue to begin with. And so we sat down for two hours and I literally gave her step-by-step advice as to how to tackle this. And she had the meeting, she came out and she was elated because she actually, you know, won that negotiation and got everything that she wanted. And she said to me, you know, without your help, I would never, ever have been able to achieve that. And for me, that was my aha moment. And I thought, okay, this is working and I need to put it out there for others. And it's no longer about me, it's about helping other people. And so that's basically how it all came together um, in my mind. But then I had to make it come together in reality. And um, I was fortunate to come across an Australian businesswoman who was running a contest for female Australian uh, wannabe entrepreneurs. And you basically had to pitch your business idea and a panel of 13 Australian businesswomen would critique all the applications. So I sent mine in, like you were saying with Catherine earlier, I mean, why not apply? You just don't know. 
and I won and uh, that was fantastic. Yeah, and so that was basically the platform that launched um, her career advice for me and I couldn't be happier because I had no idea what it meant to go into business and I'm still learning every single day but I'm so grateful that I had that opportunity and you know, had the, the courage to apply because it was very fruitful in the end. Very nice. So now you're actually in LA and um, you were talking a little bit about the advice you gave her as far as negotiation goes and it's hercareeradvice.com is your website. Now, have can you tell us about any past um, maybe lectures or speaking engagements or even on your blog post where you've given women advice on negotiation? Because that's actually a big topic that a lot of young female entrepreneurs have come to YFE asking to discuss is how to be better negotiators, especially when we come to maybe speaking with vendors or um, negotiating a contract with a client. Oh, uh-oh. Skype fail. <laughs> Hopefully we can get Julie back on. But if you have a question for Julie, I just want to remind you. That... Oh, here we go. Oops. Julie, are you there? Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Can you see me? We can't see you. Okay, let's see. Sorry. Um, is that better? Yep, perfect. Thank you. Hooray, she's back on. <laughs> Internet connection. Um, so I, I missed half of what you said, but I, I think the gist of it was um, what was my advice in regards to negotiations? Yes. Okay. It's a really good question. Um, and I think a lot of women struggle with this one because I think innately we're not in a, we're usually not in a position to ask for things. We're usually the ones giving. And so for us to negotiate something that works in our favor doesn't come naturally for a lot of women. And the thing that I always tell people that I speak with and that I coach with is that every single negotiation is a two-way street. And no matter what the negotiation is, whatever you're given in the first instance isn't the done deal. It's not the final um, offer, if you like. And there's always room for negotiation. And the, the main thing that I would say is that you need to know the topic inside out and back to front, whether it's a salary negotiation or you're buying a car or whatever it may be, you need to be completely on top of the detail because the other person certainly will be because they have their own agenda and you have your agenda. So you need to know the topic extremely well and then you need to be able to really justify why you want what you want out of that negotiation. Um, and I think you also need to be realistic. And if we're talking about negotiating salary, for instance, there's always a top end and a lower end to any salary. And you need to be realistic as well. And if you're actually asking for a salary, let's say that's way above what you're currently getting, you need to have a rock solid reason as to why you're worthy of that. Um, and of course, that talks about your experience and your skill set and what you can offer to that company's bottom line potentially. So you need to be able to know the topic inside out and be able to justify it and know that it may go back and forth. And usually the, the bigger the end result, the longer the negotiations. So that's something to think about, that it may not necessarily ha happen overnight. It may take days, weeks, may take months. It depends on what the topic of negotiation is. All right, so we're, if you're just joining us now, we're with Julie Kelly over on the Young Female Entrepreneurs live stream. And before we get into her top three uh, success secrets for women building a career while starting a business on the side, um, I wanted to go into some of the uh, career websites, the resources for young women, and get Julie's opinion on each one. So the first one we have up is... I'm sending... <laughs> mental notes to my producer <laughs> uh, the it's under it's yeah you know what one it is yeah okay so savor the success.com have you heard of savor the success julie yes i have what are what's your opinion on how women can use savor success savor the success i guess i'm sorry could you say that again you're you're breaking up on me sorry about that so savor the success what how would you recommend a young woman use a website like savor the success since you are familiar with that i think all of these types of websites usually have um, a main component to them and um, i think you should key in on what that particular website's expertise may be and um, obviously we were talking about the daily news earlier and they have it 
a particular expertise for job seekers and Savor the Success has another sort of expertise. So I think honing in on specific career websites that provide what you need at your particular point in time in your career is really important in regards to like managing your time as well as getting the most out of that particular site. That, I think that's a great point there in case you missed it. So it's managing your time, getting the most out of the website because a lot of these websites have a fee, especially to savor the success. I think it's something like $40 a month to be associated with this organization. So um, that's a great point. Our second site, I wanted to go through a few of them and get to Julie's success points. So just pop through the slide. <laughs> Yeah, so the Daily Muse is another one that we talked about. It's actually, I numbered them. Somebody is not on top of his game here. <laughs> um, so I think we might be on number six or seven or eight here. We're going, we're just, we're improvising here. Again, okay, Claudia Chan is another one. Have you heard of this, Julie? I have not. So Claudia Chan, I and I honestly, the only reason why I've heard of it, it's ClaudiaChan.com, is because they've emailed me, um because of young female entrepreneurs uh, interested in me promoting their website. And I haven't used it too much, but I thought I'd direct young female entrepreneurs to look at Claudia Chan. See, see it for yourself. Get your own opinion there. The next one, Her Campus. Julie, what do you recommend with Her Campus? Have you been involved at all with that website? Can't say that I have, Jennifer, no. Next one. So the next one is Leave a Leak. So if you're on chat, I'm still on chat, so definitely um, type in your questions or your advice or say, hey, I've used that one or I haven't used that one or this one is no good, this one's really good. <laughs> um, let us know over at ovalay.tv slash live where we do our live streams every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern, and that's a perk for being on live is to get involved in that chat. So before we go into more resources, check out youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com over the next few days, and we'll give um, we'll have provide links for those websites that we just mentioned along along with some of the resources that Catherine mentioned earlier, and of course links for uh, Julie Kelly's website over at hercareeradvice.com. So Julie, let's go ahead and go get into that top three success secrets for young professional women, because I know everyone that's on the live stream is gonna be interested in those three secrets. Absolutely, and so um, what I actually do have is a, I have a free report and it's actually called my top 10 success secrets for career women and you can download this instantly from my website at hercareeradvice.com but I wanted to take my top three success secrets for women that are employed as well as um, entrepreneurs and have a business that they're trying to grow on the side because that's that's my world right now so I can definitely relate and so the first one that I wanted to um, discuss was and, and I, the people that know me and that work with me know that this is sort of my mantra. Um, it's know your passion. And, and I say this over and over, know your passion and live your passion because the truth of the matter is that, you know, you have one life to live and if you, if you have a special gift, and not if, we all have special gifts and talents and reasons for being on this planet. And I think if you step up into that and contribute to the world in in that particular way, magic happens and opportunities come to you. And, and I've heard other entrepreneurs say, oh, when I actually decided to fulfill my dreams, you know, all these opportunities started to come to me and it was like magic. And I, and I thought that was a joke, but it's actually true. It's happened to me. And so there's a lot of power in, in living your passion and fulfilling that dream. Um, and also, you know, if, as an entrepreneur and, and as a, a career woman, it's tough. It's tough on your time. It's tough physically, emotionally and spiritually. And, and you need to be able to live that passion and follow that passion because that's what's going to get you through the tough times. If you don't have that burning desire to give back in whatever it is that you're, you're blessed with, then when the tough times come, it's going to be very easy to say, you know, forget it. It's all too hard and, and, and pack it in and, and move on to something else. So um, I always say, you know, follow your passion because that's what's going to push you through when, when times are tough. <laughs> yeah. And, nice. you know, I, I also have a lot of people that say, um, well, another mantra of mine is, and, you know, this isn't my personal, but, you know, if you live your passion, the money will follow. And I speak to so many students who um, hear me speak and they get all inspired and motivated. 
they come up to me and say, Julie, you know, you've, ex you know, you've motivated me to go to college and I'm going to go and do this, that and the other. And I'm going to make a ton of money. I'm going to be rich and successful as well. And, and I said, that's fantastic. And I am like, but are you passionate about that? And they're like, no, but it's going to make me a lot of money. And that's not, I don't necessarily believe that to be true. It may for a short amount of time, but in the long, you know, long-term plan of working 30, 40, 50 years, if you're not doing what you love, it's, it's going to be a long, long career path. So that's my first point. Um, know your passion and live your passion. Um, the second point that I would say is you need to be able to ask what you ask for what you need. Um, and in particular, I suppose, ask your current employer for what you need. So again, as women, I think we struggle with this because we're always the ones giving, we're the nurturers, we're the carers, and we're obviously in doing that, we become very selfless. But if you want to launch a, a business and be a career woman at the same time, you need to be a little selfish sometimes. And I think if you're a, if you're working full time, if you need to leave work early to go to a networking event, or if you need to um, take time off to go to some training or a seminar that's going to build on your own personal development that you can actually apply to your business, um, then you need to ask for that. If you need to have flexible working hours, if you're in the middle of a launch, for instance, if you need to work four 10 hour days instead of five, eight hour days and have one day off to dedicate to your business, you need to ask for that. No one's ever going to offer you that as an employer. So you need to be able to step up and ask for that. And worst case scenario, your boss says no, and you go to a plan B, but you need to be able to do that. I think that's really important because there's only 24 hours in each day and we all have the same 24 hours, but as a career woman and an entrepreneur, you need to manage that time even more than before. And, and I know I certainly don't sleep half as much as I ever used to and I'm burning the candle at both ends. So that's something to think about as well. So going into that really, um, just as a quick side note, asking for what you need, do you tell your employer that you're starting a business on the side or do you keep it mum? No, I don't. And the reason being, um, not because I'm being dishonest or anything like that, I think it's because your employer and society and um, corporate America, or the corporate Western world has its own agenda. And it requires most employees to be at work for, you know, at least nine, nine through five. And if they see you there, they think that you're doing a fantastic job. And there's a lot of stigma attached to that. And I think if you you tell them that you have other interests, they start to panic and think that you're going to up and leave them tomorrow. And, and then they can change the dynamics of your working relationships. So um, I think until it starts to affect my work and my employer, I, I don't think there's reason for disclosure. Okay, very nice. So your third secret, we talked about passion. Our second secret was Ask for what you need. And our third secret is? My third one is um, develop strong working relationships with those people in power and with authority within your organization. Nice. And I, I'm sorry? Very nice. No, I think a lot of young women, that's a good point because a lot of us don't really think of that. Yeah, and the reason being that, I mean, if you're working still and still trying to build a business, it's going to take some, some, some time to obviously um, develop your business. Things don't happen overnight, unfortunately. But you also want to develop yourself within your career. And so the reality is that people like the CEO, the managing director, the chief operating officer, the chief financial officer, maybe it's your manager or your manager's manager, you need to really cultivate relationships with these people because these are the people in organizations with the ability and the power to instigate change. Um, and so you need to know who they are and more importantly, they need to know who you are. And so I always encourage people to, um, to set up meetings, whether go for a coffee or set up a lunch date or even just pop in and set up a, a meeting in their office and explain to these people who you are um, explain to them what your career goals are, what your short and long-term professional aspirations are. And if you have any major achievements or accomplishments, whether in that current position or in previous positions, you need to let these people know because these are the people that are going to think of you when a promotion or a vacancy or a new position becomes available. Because the truth of the matter is that it's very expensive for organizations to fill new roles. And they would 
potentially rather feel internally with a great candidate than have to go through the whole interview process um, of getting somebody new from an ex, you know from the external um, community. So if you're constantly um, cultivating a relationship with these people and letting them know that you're you know you're a progressive career woman who wants to align her career goals and aspirations with the companies, then when a position becomes available, you most likely be the first person that they think of because you've cultivated that relationship as opposed to somebody that they've never spoken to, don't even know who they are or what they contribute to the company. So that is, I think is really, really important. And it's an ongoing relationship. It doesn't happen after one meeting. You need to instigate those coffees or lunches and whatever it takes to really be on their radar. So Julie, can you go over the last three points and to sum it up what those were exactly? I'm sorry, say that again? So the last, uh, <laughs> Skype is always a fun, fun adventure for us over here at Oval Eye TV. So the the last three points that you went over, would you be able to sum that up to to wrap up what our three top secret success ingredients are? Absolutely. So the first one is to know your passion and live your passion. The second one is um, to ask for what you need from your current employer in order to grow yourself and to grow your business. And the last one is to cultivate strong working relationships with those people in power and with authority in your current organization. Very nice. Well, thank you, Julie, so much for being on the show this evening because those three top secret success uh, ingredients, I guess you could call them, are fantastic. And you have, I think, seven in total is what you were saying? I have ten. Ten. Even better. So one more time, the, the name of your website and where we can find you on Twitter and Facebook. So my website is hercareeradvice.com. And the Facebook page is facebook.com slash hercareeradvice. And my Twitter is at hercareeradvice. Perfect. All right. So we just talked to Julie Kelly of hercareeradvice.com. Before that was Catherine Minshew. And it's all about finding professional women resources, I <laughs> female-focused, I should say, female-focused career development sites. And we mentioned a few of them. If you go to youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com in the next few days, um, you'll be able to find a list and links as well as a list to or a link to Julie Kelly's website and Catherine Minshew's of the Daily News.com. Before we end, I wanted to mention a couple other things. Um, here at Oval Eye TV, this is our studio that we do over at Oval Eye TV every Thursday night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern for Young Female Entrepreneurs live stream. But on June 12th, we have a TV personality in the studio, the cat drawing guy. I have an image of it. The cat drawing guy from Shark Tank is going to be on Small Businesses Do It Better. That's on Tuesday, June 12th at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern. And... I'm sorry, but that's really exciting. I'm hoping he'll do the dance for us. But if you have questions about Shark Tank, about how he's built his business, show up on June 12th at, at 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 Eastern. And before we go, make sure that you show up tomorrow at the webinar for Ovalay.com. We're doing Master Your Domain. And then next Thursday, we continue again with another Young Female Entrepreneurs live stream. Oh, my gosh. And I forgot to mention, there's a Twitter chat tomorrow, Friday, June, um, what's the date? today that would be june 8th right june 8th <laughs> june 8th at 8 p.m pacific 11 eastern my goodness there is so much going on at youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com check out youngfemaleentrepreneurs.com thank you so much for watching the live stream and i hope i'll see you here next thursday